So a few weeks back, I put out a video sharing my favorite setups for the Camaro Joe, and you guys seemed to react really well to it. A lot of you were first time users, so you were wondering how it was set up, and a few of you have had it for a while, and there were still some little tips in there. So today, we're gonna to go over something a little bit different, and that is how to actually fire up the Camaro Joe. Now, I'm sure there are probably a few different ways of doing this, but uh, I've tried different ones in the past, and this is the one I kind of settled on that I go to every time, just to get it fired up and sort of dial in the temperature. So it is massively different from firing up a kettle. So the kettle, chimney starter full of charcoal, light it up, tip it in, you're good to go. There's a little bit more to it with a Kamado Joe, well, with any ceramic barbecue, really because you have to let the thing become heat soaked, which we'll explain later on in the video. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna pull you over to the Kamado Joe and we'll show you, it's just sitting the way it is from my last cook, I've sort of brushed the ash out of it. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about how we get the fire going in it and then the stages we go through to get it up to temperature and dialed in. Okay, so we'll have the Kamado Joe left. The way it was after the last cook, I've just lifted the grates out and give it a quick brush out. Uh, you'll see there is still a little bit of charcoal in here which is really just the leftover stuff from the last cook. Um, you can leave it in there and put the fresh stuff in on top of it, which is what I do. Some people will go through and lift all of this out, put the fresh stuff in and then tip this bag on top. But I don't have the patience for it. This seems to have worked okay so far. The one thing you do need to watch out for is your grate down the bottom. You need to make sure that these little bits don't all fill up these holes because that's your main airflow so the key thing is to make sure you can always see that grate and that the holes are uh, empty and allowing air through so i will grab some charcoal we'll fill it up and then we will get a few fire lighters into it so that's all we're going to put into it there's some good big lumps in there some slightly smaller stuff to get it going, the main thing is that you can see that grate at the bottom. So what I tend to do is I will bank it all to one side so that you can at least see the cooking grate at the cooking grate, the charcoal grate at the bottom. So we'll get a couple of fire lighters into that. Now here's the other thing. If I'm doing low and slow, I will only put one fire lighter in towards the front and then allow the fire to slowly spread backwards. Because the vent is at the front or the inlet, the fire tends to burn hottest at the front and then it gradually works its way back. The lid vent is in the middle of the barbecue, so if air is being brought in through the bottom, comes up through the front of the barbecue and makes its way towards the middle, so the fire is always being pushed backwards. So one of these in the front, uh, light it up, uh, and that will allow your burn to work its way back. If you're doing a roast or a higher temperature, we're going to aim for around 190, 200 today. Uh, I'll light it up with two just to get it going a little bit faster. So if we stuff those into the charcoal, grab a row torch and light them up. Now we just need to leave that be for a little while to build up a good fire in the charcoal. Um, so you don't want to close your lid down straight away, make sure your bottom vent is fully open and also clean out your ashtray um, as regular as you can. I keep a bucket below the barbecue, I pull it out every single cook and tip it in just to make sure it's not filling up with ash and that little mesh screen is packing up with ash and won't let the airflow through. Airflow is key to getting it going. So we'll let those fire lighters take hold with the charcoal, then we'll come back and show you how we start building everything into it and uh, how we start dialing in the temperature. Okay, coals have been going for about five minutes just with the lid open. I did pull it down slightly after we got a bit of a fire going in there. The only real reason to do that is to try and catch a bit of speed up on heating up the dome. So with your lid fully open, a lot of the heat's getting out. If you pull it down slightly, the heat from the flames is rising up straight into the dome and you should notice your temperature gauge move slightly. It's never going to heat it properly, but you're getting a head start on it. Our fire is going quite nicely down in here. The next thing to do is to get everything else put into it. Uh, so I'm going to put in the accessory rack. So this is just for my standard roasting setup. Pop in the deflector plates. Now, one thing I'll mention is if it is really cold, luckily Northern Ireland has started to warm up a little bit. Quite surprised. If it is really cold, 
I will put the accessory rack in uh, from the start, light it up, and then leave my deflector plates in the V formation. So pull them right out to the side. Uh, that allows them to take on a little bit of heat uh, while the fire is getting going and come up the temperature slowly, uh, just to avoid them going from freezing cold to hot. But it's not actually too bad today, so I'm going to just close them up from now. Make sure they're centered and you have an even gap all the way out round. Then we can put in our grills. At this point, we'll close the lid. Top vent is fully open. Um, so we're going to leave that fully open for now just to let it come up the temperature. At this point, keep an eye on your temperature gauge. There's a good chance it will start to rock up quite fast because all the heat is coming up, hitting that diffuser plate and being pushed out to the sides, which rolls up around the lid and hits the thermometer. So it is going to give us a little bit of a false reading to start with. Um, but we leave both vents fully open. We will probably go over our target temperature slightly. Uh, then we can start shutting things down once we know the dome is up to temperature. Okay, it's been 10 minutes or so and the temperature has now raised to 220 degrees uh, on the thermometer. But the actual barbecue lid itself, it's hot, but it's not that hot. I can hold my hand here quite comfortably uh, without it really burning, uh, which means our ceramics aren't heat soaked yet. So the way a Kamado Joe cooks, you have the heat coming from below, uh, obviously from the fire. But once that ceramic absorbs as much heat as it can possibly absorb, it starts radiating it out then, and that's why the whole dome will be radiating heat down on your food. Uh, and that's what cooks it so evenly. So we're gonna give it another little while just with that uh, top vent open uh, and the bottom vent open before we start shutting things down. Okay, but another five, 10 minutes has gone by and our ceramics are getting hot. I can hold my hand there, but I can only hold them for a few seconds before I need to move it away. So we know they're starting to reach their sort of optimum heat soakedness. Is that a word? I don't know. But they're getting hot anyway. So at this point, we're gonna start closing things down because we were aiming for a temperature of around 200 or so. So first thing to do is shut down the bottom vent. We're gonna leave the top one as it is for now. But the bottom one I'm gonna take down to probably, what, just over two, two, three fingers. Uh, and we'll leave it at there and see what that does to the temperature. The temperature should drop ever so slightly as the flames and stuff die down in that charcoal, because then we're just working off the residual heat from the charcoal and whatever the barbecue has absorbed. So we've knocked that down a little bit. We'll see what that does to the temperature. Uh, then we can start adjusting with our top vent as well. Okay, we've left that setting now for uh, probably around 15 minutes. Our temperature has dropped to just over 200. Uh, so our bottom vent is on roughly two fingers. Top vent is still fully open. If you try to touch the dome, it is scalping hot. Can't touch it, scalping. I don't know if that's a saying anywhere else in the world, but over here, that means it is very warm. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is just knock that top vent down a bit. So we'll bring it down to probably in between the second and third uh, notch on the control tower. Uh, and we'll leave it be and that should settle it out in and around that 200 mark, uh, which is what we're aiming for. Uh, we know all our ceramics are heat soaked, uh, so they're not going to absorb any more. And once that temperature has settled out at that, it will sit there rock steady for a long, long time. So that is my method for firing up my Kamado Joe. Uh, it's probably not the only method or there's slightly different ways of doing it. That would be if I was just doing a general roast. When I'm grilling, I don't tend to uh, worry too much about the temperature. It's just hot or hotter. Uh, so that's whenever the different uh, setups start to come into play. If you haven't seen that setup video, you can check it out in the iCard up here. Um, but grilling, really, that's whenever you start taking uh, the other levels into account. Uh, so it, it took a long time for me to get used to setting that uh, barbecue up in temperature. Once you do get it dialed in, it will sit there for days. It is so good. Um, but it's just a little bit different than coming from a kettle. With a kettle, it's really all about putting the right amount of fuel into it. The Kamado Joe, you bring it up uh, gradually so you don't shock the ceramics. 
We didn't really talk about uh, charcoal at the start of it. I flip-flopped back and forth between it. At the start, I wasn't putting very much charcoal in at all. Uh, then I went to filling the basket completely, but I just found it choked out the airflow a bit too much. So now I've kind of settled in between where I will usually half or two thirds fill the charcoal basket. Uh, but as long as I can see that bottom grate, I know there's air getting through, so I tend to bank it all to one side. Um, once all the ceramics are up to temperature, it doesn't really make that big of a difference because the heat is uh, radiating out of that ceramic all around the food. So as far as fire up times go as well, kettle, usually we're talking 20 minutes or so and you were ready to cook. Uh, it is a bit longer with the Kamado Joe, so you're looking closer to probably 30 to 40 minutes. But it is well worth it. It cooks food a lot more even than the kettle does, I find. Uh, purely because it has that heat source right over the top of it as well. Now I'm probably going to get slated from the kettle guys for saying that, but both are great ways to cook. Both will cook brilliant food, but I just find the ceramics with that dome, once it is up to temperature, it cooks food a little bit more evenly. But that's just my opinion. So I hope that was helpful. I know whenever I got the KJ, I struggled to find a video that really went step by step by step through it. Um, so I hope that was helpful for you guys. Uh, who are only starting out and trying to learn how to dial in those temperatures. But it, uh, it's a tricky business, but it's worth it. Stick with it, you will get it in the end. Uh, the key thing for me was uh, allowing the ceramics to heat soak. I never did that at the start. As soon as that temperature dial read 200 degrees, that's what I was aiming for. I was closing down vents because I was so terrified of letting it creep up. Um, but then the ceramics never really got heat soaked or whenever they did, the temperature plummeted. Uh, because all that heat that was left inside the barbecue was being absorbed into the ceramics and the fire wasn't really given up enough. I, thought, I don't know if that makes sense. It should make sense. Either way, I didn't leave it long enough. That's pretty much what it is and didn't allow the ceramics to heat up. So, hope you found it useful. Uh, huge thanks to all my YouTube members for supporting the channel. Uh, we're having good crack with the food challenges. We're on to month three now, I think. Yes. Uh, if you want to get involved with it, you can click the join button down below or there's a link in the description of the video. Don't think the join button shows up on iPhone, so if you're on one of them, link in the description. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.